What's up guys, I'm Iris Shell and this is Too Deep. In previous videos, we discussed the question, what happens when you die? And we discussed Sheol and we discussed Hades and we discussed heaven. But, you know, we never really discussed the mysterious place called paradise. Now, this word paradise is only in the New Testament three times and it's in three different books. The first time we see this word is actually in a very well-known story. It's, it was used in the conversation with Jesus and the thief on the cross. It's found in Luke chapter 23, verse 40 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. To me, this completely, totally solidifies where paradise is. Because Jesus tells the thief on the cross that he would be with him, Jesus, in paradise that day that same day so when jesus died where did he go let's just take a quick look at matthew chapter 12 verse 39 through 40 but he answered them an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet jonah for just as jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth when Jesus died, he didn't ascend into heaven. He descended into the heart of the earth. He descended into Sheol. Now, as we said in previous videos, Sheol is the place of the dead. It's, it's split in half by a great chasm. One side is a place of peace and the other side is a place of torment. Before Jesus rose from the dead, all who died went to Sheol. The righteous went to Abraham's bosom and the unrighteous went to a place of torment. For more on that, check out our video, Sheol, which is under our Too Deep category. And just don't, don't judge it because it, it was my first video. And you can also check out What Happens When You Die, which is under our Not For The Week Of Heart category. Now, I'm not the only one under this impression. David, a man after God's own heart, said it like this in Psalms chapter 16, verse 9 through 10. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. David wasn't the only one either. Paul, the greatest apostle who ever lived, explained Jesus' dissension and ascension like this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. And saying he ascended... What does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. So if Jesus descended into Sheol when he died and the thief on the cross would be with him in paradise that very day, we can understand that Jesus was referring to Abraham's bosom as paradise. We can be sure because if Jesus died and descended into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, and he told the thief on the cross that he would be with him in paradise that very day, then it would have to be a place of peace, not the place of torment if it's paradise. Now, let's look at the second time that paradise is mentioned, because I believe that a lot of people take this verse out of context. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 through 4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. I've seen a lot of people use this verse about paradise to prove that even if it were possible for us in today's world to be taken up into heaven that you can't speak about what you've seen or heard. But that's not, that's not actually what Paul wrote. Paul said that when the man was taken to paradise, he heard things that cannot be uttered by human lips. He didn't say that this is how it is with every single person who goes to paradise, but this specific man. If 
if that's the case, then Jesus wouldn't have been able to tell the story in Luke chapter 16 of the rich man and Lazarus, which takes place in Sheol. It talks about paradise, which is Abraham's bosom, and it talks about the place of torment. So we can't say that. So Paul didn't actually say that, you know, this is how it is with every single person who goes to paradise. It's just this specific person, just this specific man, because of what he heard, something special that he heard. Now, the next thing that throws a lot of people off is that it says they were caught up into paradise. The problem is that this isn't an accurate translation. The phrase was caught up is the Greek word harpazo, which means to snatch away, to take away, to seize. We see this same word in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Take it by force is the same word. It's also the same word used three times in John chapter 10, 7 through 30, describing that no one can snatch us out of the hand of God. So Paul isn't saying that the man was caught up, but that he was snatched away to paradise. So this verse isn't saying that paradise is up. It's simply boasting of this man's experience. And in doing so, Paul is saying it is possible to go to paradise without dying. He's saying that it's possible to have a spiritual encounter with God, that he snatches you away to paradise, heaven, or anywhere on earth to show you something or to tell you something. Now, the last time we see paradise mentioned in the Bible is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He who has an heir, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Jesus himself says that the tree of life is in the paradise of God. This is where we get a little bit deep. In Genesis chapter 3, it records that both Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they and the devil all received punishments because of this. One of the punishments was that the right to eat of the tree of life was taken away from them and their descendants. God didn't destroy the tree of life. He just blocked the way to it. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 22 through 24. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed a cherubim and the flaming sword that turned every way to, the, to guard the way to the tree of life. So could it then be that the Garden of Eden and its trees were brought down to Sheol? Now this, this would make sense then why the tree of life is in the paradise of God. Now I don't want to get too too deep into this because I feel like this could be quite a deep conversation that needs its own video. But look at what the word of the Lord said to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 15 through 17. Thus says the Lord God, on the day the cedar went down to Sheol, I caused mourning. I closed the deep over it and restrained the rivers, and many waters were stopped. I clothed Lebanon in gloom for it, and all of the trees of the field fainted because of it. I made the nations quake at the sound of its fall when I cast it down to Sheol with those who go down to the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water were comforted in the world below. They also went down to Sheol with it, to those who are slain by the sword. Those who were its arm, who lived under its shadow among the nations. According to Jesus, who is the word of the Lord, which is who came to Ezekiel in verse 1, all the trees of Eden went down to Sheol. They were comforted in the world below. Therefore, how could it be that they were in a place of torment? So we have to then come to the understanding that they were in a place of peace, which would be paradise, Abraham's bosom. Now, some could say that this isn't literal because he was talking to Pharaoh. This is a spiritual 
message to Pharaoh. Sure, the overall word was to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, but never is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, referred to as the trees in the Garden of Eden or the Garden of Eden itself. So could it not be that God was comparing the situation of the Garden of Eden and its trees with Pharaoh and his people? Because that's what it seems Jesus is telling Ezekiel in this chapter. So then why would Eden be in Sheol? Well, if we go back to Adam's punishment for eating of the forbidden fruit, we get a little bit of a hint. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, it says, By the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now at first I thought, okay, Eden is in paradise because we return to the dust that we originally came from and was formed into the image of God with. But Genesis 3.23, which we read earlier, says that Adam was removed from the Garden of Eden toward the ground that he came from. So Adam and all that, he, and all that came from him, including Eve, when they die, will return to the ground from which we came. But what made Adam so special was that the spirit that God breathed into him, that's what made him formed in the image of God. So when he sinned, he lost that image. He didn't physically die, but he spiritually died. And when Adam died physically, his body was going to return to the dust that it came from. But the spirit that God breathed into him had to go somewhere. That spirit that made it possible for his descendants, even though they weren't created in the image of God, they weren't born in the image of God, they were born in the image of Adam, even though they weren't walking and talking with God in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden, they could still communicate with God. So if we were originally created to live in the Garden, then why wouldn't our spirit if we are righteous, return to this, that same garden when we die. Why wouldn't our spirit, if righteous, return to the place that we could commune, where we originally communed with God? And we know that the spirit of God is in Sheol, because look at what David said in Psalms 139, verses 7 through 8. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. So just to sum everything up for you guys, Sheol is split into two places that are separated by a great chasm so that no one can cross from peace to torment and vice versa. The place of peace is paradise. Paradise isn't above, it's below. It's in the center of the earth because when we lived a righteous life before Christ rose from the dead, our spirit went to the place originally created for the people of God. It returned to the Garden of Eden, which is now in paradise. This is why the tree of life is in the paradise of God. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.